In this video, we're going to take a quick look at some of the fundamentals of how textures work under the hood. And specifically, we're going to talk about things like RGBA, rasterization, and aliasing. So if you're already familiar with these concepts, feel free to skip this video. Let's start with RGBA. RGBA stands for red, green, blue, and alpha. And it's the way that textures exist in memory while you're using them in Unity. And there's actually a great presentation online that explains kind of how all this works. Uh, the presentation overall is actually highly technical, but this particular piece nicely illustrates RGBA. So what we have here is an image. And an image, of course, is just a bunch of pixels, and each of these squares is a pixel. And uh, an image then, you know, might have a, a pixel size. So this one might be, I don't know, like 20 by 40 pixels, give or take. And if we want to draw, say, a line in our image, in our texture, then we'd simply fill in the according uh, pixels with the color of the line. And that works, you know, well for horizontal and vertical lines. Um, and we can do it certainly with diagonal lines as well, although, you know, it's not quite as pretty. But we basically just take the um, line from start to finish and any pixels that it intersects, we fill with that color. Um, now, it doesn't have to be solid colors, of course. We can also use gradients. And the way that we actually store all of the color information in each pixel is by splitting the color into the red, green, and blue that you can add together to get that color. So as a kid, you learned, uh, for instance, when you're painting, that when you add primary colors together, you can create other colors. And in paint, the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. But light works differently than paint. Um, paint actually essentially subtracts while light adds. They kind of go in opposite directions. So our primary colors on the monitor turn out to be red, green, and blue. We can make every other color from those colors. And in fact, if you were to zoom way in on your monitor and put it under a microscope, it's actually made of a whole bunch of very tiny red, green, and blue LEDs. So what you see here is actually pretty accurate to what's physically going on with your monitor. Now we call the red, green, blue, and alpha, the R, G, B, and A, we call them channels. And each channel has an accuracy of between zero and 256. And that's the color, or I'm sorry, that's the number that represents that color. So for instance, zero in the red channel means that there's no red in that particular pixel. And 255 means that the red is fully applied in that pixel. And this goes for green and blue as well. And again, this goes back to the hardware of your monitor. The tiny red LED in every pixel on your screen can get brighter and darker. That's really all it can do. And it has 256 levels of brightness, 256 levels of accuracy. So that's how accurate uh, we can brighten and darken the LED. And you can actually play around, um, and I'm going to just animate these for a second. Um, you can actually play around with the R, G, and B values in most image editing programs, and you can see how they color correspond to colors. Um, and you can actually do this right in a browser as well. Um, this currently only works in Bing, but if you just type RGBA, it'll actually pull up a color picker, and you've probably seen this somewhere else in one of the image editing programs. But if you take this left bar and you slide it up and down, you can see that the red, green, oh, sorry, I'm gonna move this over here, that the red, green, and blue values corresponding to whatever color we have here change over time. And not surprisingly, when we're in the blue area, the blue is biggest. When we're in the green area, the green is biggest. And red plus green in our light spectrum equals yellow. And purple is made of red and blue, so things we'd fairly well expect. And I mentioned earlier that light is additive. So if we go from our full color to black, we'll see that everything goes down to zero. Black means we have no light. Whereas if we go up to white, everything's gonna go up to 255. So when everything is at full blast, we have the color white. When everything's off, we have the color black. And that, in a nutshell, gives you the red, green, and blue channels. And there's one more. The last part of each pixel is called the alpha. An alpha is a measure of how opaque or how transparent an image is. So I'm going to pop over to Photoshop for a second. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with this concept from various places. But essentially, as I make an image, in this case our image of a cat, as I make it less opaque, as I take the opacity down, we're going to start to see the image behind it. And then as I take the opacity up, 
it's going to more and more cover the image behind it. So again, alpha is just a measure of how opaque or how transparent an image is. Um, and sometimes we'll, we won't talk about uh, alpha, sometimes we'll talk about the opposite, which is transparency. So when alpha is full, it's fully opaque. And as we lower the alpha, it becomes more transparent. And likewise, as transparency goes up, the image becomes more clear. So when something has high transparency, it's mostly clear. When it has high alpha, it's mostly opaque. So heading back over um, to our presentation, putting it all together, textures are just a series of pixels. And each pixel has red, green, blue, and alpha channels. And each of these is some number between 0 and 255. And then we can represent these in memory as bits and bytes, just the same as we do everything else. And we can see here on Wikipedia that our red channel, we can represent numbers between 0 and 255 with 8 bits or 1 byte of memory. And green also gets 8 bits or 1 byte, and blue gets the same, and alpha gets the same. So in total, we have 32 bits of information in our color. And as we saw in earlier videos, uh, 32 bits is also the amount of memory that an integer takes up. An integer also has 32 bits. So each pixel has one integer worth of information. So you could take your entire image and you could write it out as just a long series of integers where each integer is one pixel. And in fact, that's pretty much what your computer does under the hood. So now that we understand how colors are represented on a texture, we need to understand how shapes are represented on a texture. Now, as we know, textures have limited resolution. So for instance, you know, 500 pixels wide by 300 pixels tall. So when we want, when we want to represent a shape on a texture, uh, as we saw with the lines earlier, we have to turn our shape into pixels. And so just jumping ahead in this presentation here. So here we have a, um, a shape that's a perfect triangle. But when we try and take that shape and we try and stick it on our image, we see that the result is, is not quite perfect. And this, this process of trying to take our triangle and turn it into the pixels is called rasterization or rasterizing the triangle. It's not a perfect process. Um, and we're going to end up with some issues. Um, so for instance, we can end up with something called aliasing. And aliasing is essentially just taking an object and trying to match it to pixels and getting this issue of these jagged edges. So here I have this solid color A, but when I try and approximate it as pixels, it doesn't look very good. Um, now we can, we can try and go the opposite direction. We can try and run some math by it and smooth it back out. Again, this was a solid image. It doesn't have soft fuzzy borders, but if we add soft fuzzy borders, it actually looks a bit more like our original shape. And this process is called anti-aliasing. So this is an anti-aliased image and this is an aliased image. And there's lots of math that goes into why aliasing occurs and, and you know, physics and other things and how you can do anti-aliasing. But the wonderful thing is we don't have to understand what all of that is. We don't have to care about any of it. All we have to understand is what rasterization is, what aliasing is, and how we can try to mitigate the, the impacts and the fact that we're never gonna get it perfect. It's always gonna be an approximation. And those are some of the, the major concepts that we need to deal with, that we need to understand with images. Just as a quick recap, if we head back to the beginning of this presentation, we see that our image is just a series of pixels. When we draw objects, we're just going to add colors And those colors are going to correspond to red, green, blue, and alpha channels. So we're going to have RGBA for each pixel. And then we're going to have this process called rasterization. And that's where we're going to try and take an image, uh, I'm sorry, a, an object, and turn it into pixels on our screen. And we're going to end up with issues like aliasing. And that is, in a nutshell, what's going on under the hood when we work with textures.